Earlier we learned about respiratory mucosa. We learned about pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. We learned about goblet cells. We learned about basement membrane. And today we will enhance our knowledge about connective tissue. Connective tissue of mucosa, respiratory mucosa is known as lamina propria and it is a loose connective tissue. One of the main functions is to provide support to epithelium. It is rich in blood supply. As you can see, several blood vessels with erythrocytes or red blood cells within. It contains numerous cells. Most importantly, fibroblasts that, make, that primarily make extracellular fibers. Let's try to have a better understanding of connective tissue. Connective tissue, as we know, is one of the four types of tissues found in the human body. The term is a very broad term and refers to a variety of tissues, all with some common features. It is also the most abundant tissue in the body. Although the slide under review belongs to trachea and we are dealing with lower respiratory tract, but we will have to discuss connective tissue in general rather than just focusing on loose connective tissue of lamina propria. For better understanding, we will use a few slides that do not belong to respiratory system. We have a slide in front of us that shows dense connective tissue rather than loose connective tissue. We have a number of cells and everything between cells is known as extracellular matrix. Please note that the tissue does not belong to respiratory system. It just shows better details and will help, help us understand the concepts. The term connective tissue represents two different components namely cells. These are the nuclei of cells within the connective tissue and the extracellular matrix. The most important cells of loose or dense connective tissue are number one fibroblast. These cells make most of the extracellular matrix. Most importantly fibers that bind these cells together. These cells are recognizable by their elong elongated nuclei. So we can confidently say that these uh, nuclei belong to fibroblast and these fibroblasts are mobile cells that make this extracellular matrix most importantly fibers. The tissue also has cells that migrate from blood for defense or immunity. These cells are plasma cells, lymphocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils and mast cells, macrophages. Fat uh, cells are also found. Unlike epithelia most cells of the loose and dense connective tissue are very mobile and move from one place to another place uh, easily. Extracellular matrix fills the gaps between the cells. So these bluish looking structures are nuclei of cells and everything between cells is known as extracellular matrix. These cells have much wider gaps in contrast to tightly packed cells of the epithelium. Extracellular matrix plays an important role in functioning of the tissue and it is composed of two major components, fibers and ground substance. Fibers are thread-like structures and all are made up of proteins. Unfortunately, these are not visible easily under hematoxylin and eosin stain. So we have a slide with a special stain that shows some of these fibers clearly. Fibers of loose and dense connective tissue are mostly made by fibroblast. However, these fibers can also be made by other cells including smooth muscle cells. Fibroblasts are mobile cells and can be seen under spatial microscopes moving around the tissue and knitting webs just like spiders. There are three different types of fibers, collagen fibers, elastic fibers and reticular fibers. So the pinkish or reddish thread looking structures are collagen fibers and these purple looking threads which are smaller in diameter as compared to collagen fibers are elastic fibers. 
Reticular fibers are not visible in this slide. Collagen fibers are made up of protein called collagen, the most abundant protein in the body. These are quite strong and provide firmness and structure to the tissue. Collagen fibers are found in almost all types of connective tissues, including bones, tendons, and cartilages. Construction of collagen fiber occurs within and outside of fibroblast. Assembly of subunits of collagen molecules happens outside of fibroblast at the plasma membrane of the cells and need presence of special enzymes in extracellular matrix. Elastic fibers are also made up of a protein which is called elastin. Elastic fibers are much smaller in diameter as compared to collagen fibers as we can see here. They appear to have a branching pattern. In contrast to collagen fibers, they have an enormous ability to stretch and then recoil back to their original size. They have an ability to stretch up to 150% of their original size without being damaged. This gives a number of organs elasticity such as skin and lungs. It is this fiber that prevents arteries from over distension. Body stops making this fiber at the age of around 13. Wrinkles appear as a result of loss of these fibers. Similarly, loss of these threads in lungs as a result of old age or smoking decreases the elastic capability of lungs which decreases lung function. This fiber is also known as fiber of beauty. Scientists are trying to find ways to reactivate genes that enable fibroblasts to make this fiber. We have a chest x-ray in front of us which shows a pair of lungs that hardly have any elasticity. So the lungs are um, a bit bigger in volume and they're just hanging down because of the gravity. Uh, notice the volume of lung is visible beyond ninth posterior rib although the posterior ribs are not visible clearly here but uh, the other signs of uh, emphysema are also visible the diaphragms are somewhat flat uh, these should be dome shaped naturally and the lungs should not be visible beyond ninth posterior rib so such conditions are thought to be a result of uh, loss of elastic fibers. There is another uh, type of fiber which is known as a reticular fiber and, and these are also made up of uh, type 3 collagen. Unfortunately we don't have a good example here but in some tissues this fiber is made by special cells known as reticular cells. Very similar in function uh, to that of collagen fibers but are more abundant in some tissues versus others. So we'll do a bit of a revision here. The connective tissue is made up of cells an extracellular matrix which is visible in front of you as uh, pink pinkish material. Extracellular matrix is composed of fibers that are made up of proteins and the fibers are not visible under the stain. The second component of extracellular matrix is known as ground substance. So technically anything between fibers and cells is known as ground substance. While fibers are knitted together as nets or web-like formations to provide structural support, ground substance contains water, complex proteins and carbohydrates to provide functional support. Ground substance can be liquid, gelatinous, thick fluid or calcified as in case of bones. Ground substance also has a regulated quantity of water and the amount of water moving in and out of the tissue is in equilibrium. Excess accumulation of water is known as edema, which causes swelling of the tissue. One of the important functions of ground substance is to provide a medium with a very sensitive and controlled environment for its cells to operate and function. All nutrients from blood vessels diffuse through extracellular matrix to reach cells, and similarly, all metabolic waste diffuses through extracellular matrix before reaching the blood vessels. Extracellular matrix is usually synthesized within cells and is secreted outside as and when necessary. And these are the references.